Tell me when you see one, brother. You got it. They just look like big garbage can lids, don't they? Yeah, we're looking for the elusive uh, manta ray with a few big brown slobs on it today. Yeah, there's lots of bait in here. Usually where you find the birds diving and lots of bait, I've, it's been my experience, that's usually where I end up finding the rays. It's just, maybe it's coincidence, I don't know. Oh, but they're in here eating the same thing as a bait fish, aren't they? Yeah, it's either either that or they're eating the spawn from the, uh, the bait fish themselves. I saw that on a documentary once. All right, Blair, I got a ray. How far? Looks like about 11 o'clock, maybe 20 yards. I think he may want to, it's a perfect presentation. He's swimming right at us. Get the croaker, drop the croaker on him. All right, I'll grab it. We'll see if we got one underneath that little ray. Where's he at? He's swimming right at us. Perfect opportunity to throw the croaker underneath him. There is one. Got him? There, yeah, there's one under there. <laughs> nice. Hopefully he doesn't get on that ray. I'm gonna jump down and help right, you. Come on. Gotta like that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> right underneath the ray. Old circle hook did his job too, brother. Let's hope it's not about a four foot remora. The scenario with the ray swimming at us is about the best, best presentation you could get. He's back up under us. Way up under us, he's, okay. he's high. Okay, whoa, whoa, you're good, you're good. Well, welcome to this episode of Addictive Fishing. I'm here with my old buddy, Scott Lum and we're stomping on the Space Coast. It is springtime, you know what that means on the Space Coast. Cobia, big cobia. We got rays all around the boat today. Uh, little, a few of them are being a little finicky, but we found one that uh, had a cove that would eat. That was a serious ray right there. What we mean by rays, big manta rays. And what these cobia are doing, they're migrating and they love to hang on the top of cobia. On the top of cobia, got me excited. <laughs> they like to hang on the top of rays, underneath the rays. You saw that one right there. We didn't see a Kobe on top of him. Drop that, what is it, a croaker? Yep, croaker. Drop that croaker right underneath him. Circle hook. S laser sharp circle. Definitely getting the job done today, brother. There's another ray that jumped just now. Right out in front of him, dudes. Well, welcome back. We're still on this Kobe. At least we're hoping it's a Kobe. It's so far, it's a mystery fish. <laughs> We've been out here about all morning and uh, just hoping that they come up early. But they're doing their usual thing and that's a oh, nice cobia. That one's coming up. That's nice. a nice cobia. That one will do. Look at that circle hook, right where it's supposed to be. Yep, button right up in the top lip. I don't think he liked the looks of this boat. <laughs> Could have been me or you though. <laughs> Could have been y'all. Tell them about the migration. I've, I've run my mouth enough today. Yeah, this is the springtime um, cobia migration. You know, they come through as the water temperatures warm up from south to north uh, in the springtime. When it reaches that 68 degree water and warmer, 68 to 70 degree water, they start moving back up north. And uh, right now we've actually got uh, quite a few rays pushing through and uh, free swimmers and then some on turtles as well. What they do when they're free swimming, sometimes these rays, what they'll do, the rays will come up and they'll jump and if you've ever been in the ocean long enough they come up and jump and smack what they're doing there is knocking the parasites off and uh, at least that's what we figure they're doing and uh, what happens is those those cobia that are on those rays they get scattered around because they can't find the ray again but uh, a lot of times you'll just get them free free swimming and migrating I like the new series of rods there that that one there with the uh croaker that you have the Kobe on is a lot more stouter uh, kind of more to my liking with the offshore stuff that I do yeah I think it, it's twice the rod that other eight footer we had and it's almost half the price about to wear my arm out uh oh if I say that he takes about ten more feet of line tell you what that croaker makes all the difference in the world when the fish aren't on his back and you can't see whether there's fish or not Mm -hmm. The best thing you want to do is get in front of the ray, let your, your hook and your weight or your jig head with your uh, croaker, let it sink down below the ray and uh, then the cobia sees it and then swims down and eats it. Just, just like how, what just, happened. Just how that happened, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Scott rigged this one up on what we call a, a knocker rig. 
and it's just a just an egg sinker sliding up and down the line right down to the right down to the hook we'll show it to you when we get this cubby up actually Blair I, I actually pegged that one did you peg it um I tie the hook tight and I leave about four inches of tag and then I secure it above the weight so the weight does not slide so it's, it's okay. pretty similar to a jig head actually cool beans but the laser sharp sure did its trick well the good thing about the circle hook is uh typically here it comes one you get it right in the corner and two you don't lose as many fish that's a nice one well sir i think he's about ready and scotty you want to grab that net yeah time to do something guidelike here <laughs> Always want to net them head first. That'll work, sir. Right on. We finally got some brown in the boat, man. Nice. One cobia down. I'll tell you what, guys. Cobia have got to be some of the most powerful fish after you get them in the boat. I've had them come in here and break coolers and break fishing rods, but look at that circle hook right where it's supposed to be, and it come out. Laser Sharp has done a great job with that one. But there's the first cubby of the day from springtime right here in Cape Canaveral with Captain Scott Lum. Y'all stay tuned. We're going to be right back with some more addictive fishing. We're going to get rigged up, see if we can find us another ray. Y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back. Night. Pretty good vantage point from up here, huh? Yeah, if you could only steer. Yeah, I know. It'd be great. You say they haven't been popping up to like 4.30? Yeah, they've been coming up late in the day. Scott, one o'clock out here, about 50 yards. Okay, okay, yeah. I got it. You got him? Yeah. I can't tell if he's got any fish on. Head up to him. I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. he's got fish, he's got fish. Yeah, I'm gonna get on the right side with the sun at her back. All right. Woo, look at that ray, baby. There's two on him. Three on him, four or five fish on him. There's one on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> reel it, reel it, reel it, reel it. Here he comes. Oh, he's looking at it. Here he comes, here he comes. Boom, he's got it. There's a double, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna get down here and fight him. Oh, oh, oh. I gave him slack and he popped off. Well, you're on him, Scott. Yeah, I'm glad I had that uh, livey ready to in the well already hooked up, man. It's like when opportunity happens, you got such a narrow window to react. I know. It's you like know, you don't have time to tie anything on or whatever. So that's why we carry a variety of rods on my boat. I probably bring like 14 rods. I get yelled at when I different. get yelled at when I bring that many rods. <laughs> and he might have a buddy with him since there was four or five. Yeah, that's later. right. Be ready when he comes up. He may have a friend. I feel good with the circle hook on here. That's for there he is. There he is. Nice fish. Oh, head shaker. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Got him? Yeah. I'll jump down and give you a hand with that motor. <laughs> hey, that's, right. that tower's uh, a pain to get around, but I tell you what. Ah, uh, give and take, you know. You can flat see the fish from up yeah. there. That looks like a grown one, Scott. Yeah, it's a decent fish. I'll back you up. <sighs> I was going to throw the uh, a lure to him, but I figured... Uh, it's all right. That circle hook will do the job. Yeah. <laughs> can, can you tell it's cobia season, Scott? <laughs> there's, one, there's 55 boats around us. It's a little uh, little more crowded than what it used to be, huh, Scott? This used to be all, you, all the boats you'd see on a Saturday, and then it'd be crowded. Yeah, and, that's right. When uh, When this goes off, you know... The word spreads fast. Scott and I went to school together back at Cocoa Beach High School and Roosevelt Middle School and all the way down. Did you go to Freedom 7? I didn't go. I went to Cape View. I was, I was on the other side of town there. Right here in Cuckoo Beach. It was fun coming out here as kids and doing it. I wish we had a boat like this when we were kids. Nice. That's, uh, that's a about the same as the one that's in the box already. Maybe uh, out of the same cookie cutter maybe. Huh? Oh, he, lo he looks a little fatter. Yeah, he's got a little wider head maybe. Hey, so when you saw that ray, did you see how many fish was on it, or did you yeah, just see was, that one? Well, there was like seven fish on it, oh. and that one jumped on mine, and I tried to get down out of the out of the tower up there and dropped a little slack to him, and he let go of the bait. 
Now, a lot of times they'll just hang on to that bait and you'll be fighting them, fighting them, fighting them, drop a little slack and they just let it go and the hook, no way that it can even hook them. Oh, I heard you say there was one small one. There we go. And I didn't even, I just, a, I just reacted and grabbed the, grabbed the croaker that was in the live well. That's a thick fish. Oh! Smart fish too, he might have been there before. <laughs> yeah, I like this little thing right here. It's kind of a little grip, ergonomic kind of feeling. Ergonomic, there's another one of them words. Yeah. It's one of them $10 words. He doesn't like Thanks to look at that net. Thanks for watching Fishing Today. We're teaching you all about new words. Those Kobe, man, they do a, they'll do a run, get back next to the boat, do another run, come up next to the boat, they'll do two or three. Usually one this size will do three good runs for you. He's, uh, he's testing that uh, eight foot flat blue outing. Let's see oh, him there he is. turn up on, let me see some of that white belly. Oh, they're there brown on their back and white, white, white on their belly. Have you ever had these guys ceviche? Oh, they're excellent. Oh, I got him. Yeah! <laughs> there you go, all brother. Right. Way to go. Let me get this guy up and show him off. That circle hook right in the perfect spot again. That does the best trick every time. Laser sharp sea circles. Get you a laser sharp and you can get you one of them, brother. <laughs> hey, y'all stay tuned. We're going to be right back with some more addictive fishing and hopefully another big old cobia just like this with Captain Scott Lowe. Today's Rig It Right segment, I'm going to show you what Scott and I were using out there. I first started off throwing the big jumbo DOA shrimp. Always love having one of these rigged up and ready because you never know what the cobia you're going to eat. Sometimes they're real finicky out there, especially when they're getting pounded on like they have been the past few weeks. Cobia season's been in full force here, so they've been seeing about every lure that's out there. We switched over and I started using croakers. We caught them a little earlier in the day. We were using little live baits and little tiny trocar hooks. We were catching these croakers. You saw them and they were, they were working awesome. We're using basically a circle hook and this is a five aught sea circle, hooking them right in the front of the nose. And with the croaker, they have a little bit of cartilage right in front of the nose there. Holds a hook in there, great. Hook them sideways, throw them in front of the cobia. Boom, boom, you saw the results. Using 50 pound test Seaguar, and this is the premier fluorocarbon. And like I say, if the cigar works and it gives you that one more bite during the day, it's done its job for me. Using a uni uni knot, tying together with my 20 pound Fins XS, smoothest braid I've ever used in my life. And I tell you what, it was definitely getting the job done today. Using the eight foot signature series, flats blue rod. I've, <laughs> I can't say enough about these rods. You look at them, they're definitely getting the job done. There's your bait check for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember one thing though, every fishing season starts right here at the Addictive Fishing Zone at Dick's. Rig It Right by Wright and Miguel. Scott, right up here, another ray. Another ray, I right got, up here I got in front it. of us. I think he's like walk. 50 yards, you got him? Yeah. Cool, cool beans. Yeah, he's got fish on him too. Looks like a little one. See what he's holding. He's holding a cobia, baby. <laughs> Only saw one on him. Oh. See there? I, I only saw one on. Yeah, there's another one. Oh, no, Are that's you still mine. Hooked up? That's mine. There's probably not another one if, he, if this guy's making all that commotion, not bringing another one out. It's just a little dude here, but you know what? Oh, there's a giant one right out there, right out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, here he comes. He just saw it. He saw it. He's going down. He's got it. He's got it. Circle hook. Is he on? I'm on. <laughs> Good job. I'm going to get down there and fight with you. That is a groan when you got there. A Mogan. Uh, let me <sighs> switch sides with you. Come on now. Better go a little tight on that. <laughs> Makes it fun with that platform, don't it? Oh. That one just came up free swimming right next to us. He, he wasn't even near the ray, I don't think. I hope we get this guy in the boat. Yeah, that's a nice fish. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Scotty. Yeah. I'm going to let this guy go. There you go. I got those uh, tags if you want to tag them. But there's a tag ready to go. Yeah. Go it's in that Ziploc bag right there. Look at this guy, man. What's he doing? He's up on the surface. He doesn't know he's hooked. I usually take, they don't ask for a girth, but I usually take a length and a girth. Overall length is 40 and a half. 
to the fork is 35 and a half. So that one's an actual keeper, but we're gonna let him go. Got a nice tag sticking out there. Say adios to the little cobia. And off he goes. All right, man, I gotta get around this tower. This tower is great, but uh, <laughs> after you have the fish on, there's a little bit of a hindrance there. Ow, if the fish runs around the boat. <laughs> Did you just catch me thump my head on that thing? Yeah, you gotta be in a blooper somehow. Oh, man. Uh, hey, we just stuck that tag in there. Tell me what that tag is gonna do now. Well, they're gonna, uh, we'll s fill out that report there and send it in and then it'll go into a pool of data. And then if that fish is ever recaptured, they'll be able to, um, if the person turns in the tag, they'll be able to give them the information on where they caught it, how big it was, and uh, they'll be able to determine a lot, a lot of inf information about that. Just like a tarpon. Find that line, go right, right down the back. These taste a little better and than you a tarpon, are though. putting major pressure on him. He's hating that. There you go. Right oh. on. <laughs> hey, I didn't ask for a shower, Blair. <laughs> hey, there's. That's a good Kobe there, brother. I think I'm going to get out of the way. <laughs> Let's see if we can get him out. Your hook broke off. Nice one. Or your line broke. <sighs> oh, man. Hope you don't go nuts. Let's show this guy That's, off here. Yeah, the hook's fine. Just chafe the leader. Ooh. That's that, a 60 pound leader. That right there, God, don't go nuts, guy. That right there is a fat daddy cobia. Right on. <laughs> hey, if y'all ever get a chance to come do this, remember, Captain Scott Lum, and what's the name of your guide business now? We keep CentralFloridaCharters.com. CentralFloridaCharters.com. Come to the Space Coast and catch you one of these cobia right here at the end of March, all through April. God, we catch them on in the we, we, we actually catch them year round. They just come through in, in a big push uh, seasonally, spring and fall. That's right. Well, let's point it back to the dock. Once again, don't forget about the website, addictedfishing.com. You want to come do this, look him up in the Cocoa Beach phone book. That's right. We'll see you all next week. Check out more footage from this show by logging on to addictedfishing.com for outtakes and bloopers. Fish on! Did you miss him? Otherwise known as the big brown. Whoa. A little bit of a hindrance there. Ow! If the fish runs around the boat. <laughs> yeah, time to do something guide-like here. I'm gonna get down here and fight him. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh no, I get him slack.